In this demonstration I'm going to show you how to use functions in Excel to analyze data. I've got some fairly ordinary business data here with the names, job titles and salaries of people who work in various different offices and departments of a company. I want some information about people who work in the Birmingham office and I've already put my headings here and the first thing I want to work out is what is our total salary cost for the Birmingham office so I'm going to click on that cell and I'm going to use the function sum if. Now as its name implies it adds up a range of cells depending on criteria which I will supply. When you open the bracket Excel shows me the arguments that are required range, criteria and sum range. The range is the range to which the criteria apply. Sum range is in square brackets meaning that it's optional you don't always have to supply that. You don't have to supply it if the range that you want to sum is the same as the range that the criteria applies to. We'll see if that's the case in just a moment. So okay what range does my criteria apply? I'm interested in the Birmingham office and that's going to be found in column D. So that's my range. I, I'm interested in the whole of column D. I know that there's no other data further down the sheet other than the data that I'm interested in so it's quite safe for me to enter D colon D here. If I needed to be more specific because perhaps there was other data further down the sheet I'd have to enter something like D2 to D1085 which is the exact range but D colon D is good enough here. A comma takes me on to the next argument, the criteria well, I want it to look for the word Birmingham and criteria always have to be supplied in quote marks and do I have to supply the sum range? Well yes I do because it's not the same range as the criteria range the sum range is actually column F so a comma to take me to the final argument and column F close the bracket and enter and that's my total salary cost for the Birmingham office. It's only included in that sum of column F those rows where the corresponding cell in column D contains the word Birmingham. If you have Excel 2007 or later you have average if as well works exactly the same way equals average if now I'm not going to bother to type the whole thing because Excel is helping me I just need to double click there on average if again it wants range criteria and average range so my range is column D my criteria again is Birmingham and my average range is column F. So that's my average salary for people who work at the Birmingham office. Finally an employee count. I'm going to use count if which is actually a simpler function. It only requires two arguments. Equals count if and there it is. And it just wants the range and the criteria so I'll tell it to look in column D and count the number of times the word Birmingham appears. And that's the number of employees that work in the Birmingham office. Now if you have Excel 2003 or earlier you don't have average if but you can work it out just as well by taking the total and dividing it by the count. Do it like this equals my total divided by my count and there's my result. Exactly the same as you see here. 
Now supposing you wanted to do a calculation like that but for all the different offices you might say well I'm going to have to do that loads of times. Remember that Excel has got lots of tools to help you doing work like this. Let's see how we can make this job a little bit easier. First of all I'm just going to hide these columns. I'm only doing that to give myself more space on the screen so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to hide those columns and I want a list of offices. Now there's a whole lot of office names down here. It's going to take me a while to look through all of those and find out each one but Excel can do it for me if I select the entire column I'm going to copy it, I'll click over here, I'll click in column K and paste. Now you may say well that's no good, there's lots of occurrences of each one. Excel's got a tool to help me with that. I'll go to my data tab and ask it to remove duplicates. It's noticed that I included my header that it doesn't want to include in the duplicate removal and OK. It's telling me how many it's removed and there's my unique list of office names. I just click on any one and click the AZ button to sort them and now I can do my function. Equals sum if column D. My criteria, now I don't have to write the name of an office I can just click on a cell that's got that word in it, comma, and column F is my sum range, and finish that off. So there's my total for the Amsterdam office. If I click on that cell and double click the little dot, that'll copy that function down the column. And there I have all the totals for each different office saved me a lot of time using the tools that Excel supplies. Now one thing that you do have to remember is when you copy a function down a column cell references within that function will change. The column references D colon D and F colon F will not change when you copy a function down the column because they can't but the single cell reference to the cell that's got the criteria in it will change. It's K2 here, down the bottom here, it's K14 and I want that to happen. But what if I actually specified the exact range of the cells? I'd have to be a bit more specific. I'll show you what I mean. Equals sum if. Now instead of entering D colon D for my sum for my range I'm going to enter D2 to D1085 and I've got to make sure that that doesn't change as I copy it down the column so I'll enter D2 but now I'll press the F4 key on my keyboard that enters dollar signs there which tell Excel not to change that cell reference a colon and D 10 85 and F4 again. I could have typed those dollar signs in but pressing the F4 key does it for me. So that's my range to which the criteria will apply. Comma. I'll click on the Amsterdam cell K2. Now I do want that to change so I'm not putting dollar signs in. And finally my sum range which is F2 with the dollar signs colon F1085 with its dollar signs. So that looks quite different that function there but it's only because I've been more specific about which cells comprise the range and I've put dollar signs in to make sure that those cell references don't change. When I close the bracket and press enter I should get the same result as I have in the cell next to it. And when I copy these down the column they're all exactly the same as these. Here it says DD 
and FF here it still says D2 and D1085 and F2 and F1085 so remember that if you're going to be specific about the range one final little trick since I've got a list of cells there I can make a handy drop down so that you can change the input into the function again here's what I mean a heading office and total salary So, in this cell, instead of putting an individual piece of criteria, I'm going to have a drop-down list that the person can choose which office they want to see. And I'm going to use uh, a tool called Data Validation to create a drop-down list for me. I've got this cell selected. I'm going to Data Validation up here and here where it says allow any value I'm going to tell it to provide me with a list it wants to know where is the source of that list so I'm going to click in this box here I'll just move my dialog out of the way and here is my list of cells containing the names of all the offices I'm going to click OK there and now this cell contains a drop-down list where you can pick any one of those office names here I'm going to write my function equals sum if open brackets my range d colon d my criteria this cell and my sum range f colon f now to begin with I've got a zero because I don't have anything in this cell but if I ask it to show me the Amsterdam here we are as before I'll just move out the way to get rid of that little drop down 1946500 exactly as we have up here I'll just make the column a tiny bit wider so you can read it change it to Birmingham and again we get the same result as over here so a very useful little tool just one final thing when you're creating a worksheet like this please remember to format cells with numbers in them don't just leave them as you can see them there without any formatting I'm going to ask for currency formatting I don't need decimal places because these are really big numbers there we are there are several different ways to analyze your data in Excel using functions.